So for acute myeloid leukemia, still remains a deadly disease in 2022, unfortunately. In America, approximately 21,000 Americans a year are diagnosed and approximately 10 to 11,000 die every year. So a very fatal disease for many of our patients. There have been some great success stories when we have broken down AML into subsets uh, of more manageable, molecularly similar uh, groupings. For example, under AML, you have the APL, acute promyelocytic leukemia, which is largely curable with a non-chemo-based approach, atrin arsenic. Now we understand there's a core binding factor leukemia, which is usually in version 16 or 8 to 21 translocation. That has a separate program with high-dose ARC-based chemo, so on and so forth. Flip three inhibitors, IDH inhibitors. I think the big excitement now in our field of AML are three areas. One is that of menin-related uh, pathways. So there are brand new pathways that we're unlocking that were previously thought to be um, undruggable or untargetable. Two is immunotherapy. So again, modulation of the immune system in these acute leukemias. And then still a third approach is combination therapies, doublets, triplets, and beyond, where you take either old or newer agents and combine them either together all at the same time as triplet therapies or in sequence, and then again, focusing on the toxicities and side effects. So I think the phrase here in AML is continue to look for new breakthroughs because even with the targeted therapies that are available in AML, we still have many patients who are not having optimal outcomes. So there's still an urgent need for the science, the discovery, and the clinical trials.